Hey there, it's Jacqueline here with another cooking class. And today what I thought I'd do is maybe give you a break, right? We're all super stressed out around the holiday season and the dish that I'm going to show you today could be a real time saver for you for the holidays. Of course, I know for myself, I am not a morning person. So if I can make my morning a little bit easier, you can trust I've found a technique. And so that's what this recipe is all about. So I'm sure you're probably familiar with extraordinary cheese dip, right? Now this was a recipe that I created years and years and years ago. In fact, it started out as more cheese dip and then when the person tasted it, they fell in love with it and hence the name. But I'm going to do a stuffed, are you ready for this? French bread. So using the extraordinary cheese dip, how could it be any better, right? Two great things put together. So let's get started first by making the extraordinary cheese dip. So what we're gonna do here is we've got a package of cream cheese and we're going to add some um, mayo and we're also going to add some, some cheese. And last but not least, our spices. So for the spices, what we're going to use for the extraordinary cheese dip is of course the three ingredients, which is of course our three onion. You never have to worry about mincing onion ever again. It's already done for you. Saves you crying, right? So um, what we're going to do is we're just gonna put, I like putting about two teaspoons in of each. This is lemon dilly, fabulous, and anything fish. Oh, and I should probably show you that as well. Now, just know that the ingredients in each one of these products is absolutely easy and amazing. And um, the last one that we're going to do, this is called CCB, or cheese, chives, and bacon. So uh, if you're wondering, okay, bacon, is this um, going to be healthy for me? It's actually a vegan bacon. So it is. Now, when you do get this product, when you purchase it, make sure you keep it in the fridge because that is, uh, it does have a real cheese product in there. So we don't want to have, have that going bad on you, okay? So now all we're gonna do is just simply get this all mixed up. A little tip here is uh, because our cream cheese, if I used a block, but if you want, you can use a spreadable cream cheese. I use the light version because it's very rich as you can see, but heat it a little bit in the microwave so it's a little bit easier to mix. So why don't I give you some fun food facts while I'm just mixing this up. Now, where did French bread come from anyway, right? Well, France, that would be a good guess, but actually the answer um, is probably not, just like French um, fries and things like that. They didn't really originate in France. So, according to legend, there was an innkeeper back in the 1700s who um, used to make a breakfast with eggs and bread, stale bread, of course, and decided to publish it, you know, for his guests on what he was making. Now, his last name was apparently Joseph French. Now, it was supposed to originally be called French's bread, but because he didn't know English very well and grammatically, he just forgot the apostrophe. And hence, supposedly, that's how we got French bread instead of French's bread. All right, so we've got our extraordinary dip done. Now, you'll probably not use all this, but because you've got entertaining people over, you can always set this aside and bake it later in another dish as an appy, okay? So that's step number one. Okay, now what I've done is I've gone and uh, cut a baguette. So you're gonna get a baguette and you're gonna cut it roughly in about an inch and a half wide and then slice through it with a serrated knife, not all the way through, but so it makes like a clam, okay? Now this is important because what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of this in each one and we're just going to close it back together and shove it in our multi-purpose pot. So let's just get this all done. Give me a second. 
So what else can I tell you? Fun food fact. Well, um, legend also has it that uh, this is a poor man's dish. It used steel bread. And in fact, um, if you go back in history, you can actually find that there's books and out there going back to the 1800s that share recipes on this. It was in Europe called the poor knight's dish. And I suppose it probably has something to do with the stale bread. So if you do have bread that's a little old, not to worry at all. In fact, it's probably better than having fresh bread simply because your eggs aren't going to uh, get soaked up as much and become mushy. All right. So now other, now this is a really, I should mention a really, really rich dish. As you can see, it, cheese, mayo, butter. We're gonna put butter on there. We're gonna have eggs in here. So what you're gonna want to do is when you're serving this, you're going to want to maybe break up your dish with something a little bit healthier. So my recommendation would be serve it with either a fresh fruit compote or just slice fresh fruit. Make sure you have orange juice on the table, glasses of water. Um, you may want to serve it if you do bacon. You might want to do bacon or turkey sausage. That, of course, is very rich as well. But I'm, I know a lot of people like having their, their bread in the morning. And like I said, I find that because in the morning, not being a morning person, when the kids were little, I wanted to always make sure that I had the food sort of organized for the morning so I could spend the time around the Christmas tree with the kids enjoying the morning and I could just pop something in the oven or do something that didn't require me messing up my kitchen too much and literally focus on the family. So as you can see, I've got this in our multi-purpose pot or steamer, I should say, and you tuck them in quite tight, okay? So that's what they're gonna look like. Now, in order to make French bread, we actually have to have the egg milk mix. So what we're going to do is in our four cup bowl, we're going to break three eggs. You can use a whisk, make sure you break them up really well. And we're gonna add milk and I'm gonna add pepper as well. There's no need to add salt to this whatsoever. With all the cheese in here, there's plenty of salt. Now, if you wanted to have extra flavorings in here, you could certainly do that as well. Okay. And then my ground pepper. Now, when you're buying um, a ground pepper grinder, I do wanna let you know that this is really, really handy, okay? So it comes in a refill or you can get this one with the grinder mechanism in the top. And it is adjustable. So when you turn this inside piece, it moves the grinder up and down. So you'll either have a thicker grind or a finer grind of your peppers. And there's nothing better than fresh peppercorns. Okay, so this is the make ahead. So all you're going to do now is you're simply going to pour this over top and you're gonna just put this in the fridge overnight and then I'll give you instructions on what you're gonna do next. So make sure you pour this all through. If they're pinched in tight, you might want to just make sure you separate them a bit so your egg mixture's getting in between. It's gonna make for a really, really tasty French bread. Okay, so that's basically what you'll do the first night. Now, what, I'm, what I might tell you to do next is put the lid on this and refrigerate it. Now, in the morning, when you get up, you're going to set your oven for 425 degrees. And what you're going to do is you're literally going to lift, because these have set overnight, those eggs have soaked into the bread and you're gonna carefully lift these out and you're gonna lay them on a baking sheet. So let me just show you what that would look like. Of course, these aren't soaked. You're gonna lay them on a baking sheet. Let's get it so you can see me. And using the basting brush, 
you're just going to lightly put a little bit of butter on here. And when your oven's hot at 425 degrees, you're literally going to bake it in the oven for about eight minutes. Use your flipper, flip it over, and bake it for another eight minutes until it's nice and brown and toasty. Then you can just pop it out, put it on a plate, as I mentioned, serve it with fresh fruit, and you have an amazing, tasty, tasty, decadent breakfast. Your kitchen's gonna remain clean because you've done all the work in advance, and it really wasn't a lot of work anyway, but you're going to love this little morsel. So enjoy your holidays, and uh, I will probably come up with some more great little tips and ideas for you to enjoy your holidays with your family rather than being stressed in the kitchen, okay? And just so you know, in French, I should have mentioned this before, French bread, actually bread in France is called pain. So the last thing you want to do is have pain in the kitchen. So let's just call it French bread. Anyway, enjoy everyone. I hope you really try this recipe of the extraordinary stuffed French bread. Take care. Bye for now.